From Othello by William Shakespeare Most potent, grave and reverend seniors, my very noble and approved good masters, that I have ta'en away this old man's daughter, it is most true. True, I have married her. The very head and front of my offending hath this extent. No more. Rude am I in my speech, and little blessed with the soft phrase of peace. For since these arms of mine had seven years pith, till now some nine moons wasted, they have used their dearest action in the tented field, and little of this great world can I speak more than pertains to feats of broil and battle. And therefore little shall I grace my cause in speaking for myself. Yet, by your gracious patience, I will a round, unvarnished tale deliver of my whole course of love. What drugs, what charms, what conjuration, and what mighty magic, for such proceeding I am charged with all. I won his daughter. Her father loved me, oft invited me, still questioned me the story of my life, from year to year the battles, sieges, fortunes that I have passed. I ran it through even from my boyish days to the very moment that he bade me tell it, wherein I spake of most disastrous chances, of moving accidents by flood and field, of hairbreadth scapes in the imminent deadly breach, of being taken by the insolent foe and sold to slavery, of my redemption thence and importance in my traveller's history, wherein of Anter's vast and deserts idle, rough quarries, rocks and hills, whose heads touch heaven, it was my hint to speak. Such was my process, and of the cannibals that each other eat, the anthropophagi, and men whose heads do grow beneath their shoulders. This to hear would Desdemona seriously incline, but still the house affairs would draw her thence, whichever as she could with haste dispatch, she'd come again, and with a greedy ear devour up my discourse, which I, observing, took once a pliant hour, and found good means to draw from her a prayer of earnest heart that I would all my pilgrimage dilate, whereof by parcels she had something heard, but not intentively. I did consent and often did beguile her of her tears when I did speak of some distressful stroke that my youth suffered. My story being done, she gave me for my pains a world of sighs. She swore in faith t'was strange, t'was passing strange, t'was pitiful, t'was wondrous pitiful. She wished she had not heard it, yet she wished that heaven had made her such a man. She thanked me, and bade me, if I had a friend that loved her, I should but teach him how to tell my story, and that would woo her. Upon this hint, I spake. She loved me for the dangers I had passed, and I loved her that she did pity them. This only is the witchcraft I have used. Here comes the lady. Let her witness it. Thank you for listening. Please like, subscribe, share, and check out some of my other Shakespeare recordings.